the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Amen. Good evening, beloved church, and welcome one more time to this glorious place as we have gathered as children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, to glorify God and to raise voices of thanksgiving and ascribe glory, praise, and honor and worship to His holy and life-giving name. We, His children, being justified by faith, meaning having believed in His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we have become candidates to receive the gifts of the grace of His Holy Spirit. And one of those gifts being the Holy Eucharist, the all-sanctifying, all-cleansing body and blood of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We being so blessed as His children and being heirs of His kingdom at the same time, meaning that we have the opportunity, we have the chance, we have the blessing, we have the candidacy of becoming Christ's Becoming the children of God, not only on this earth, not only partaking, but focusing on, and we are striving every day through this turmoil, through this struggle and suffering, and most importantly, through the temptations and the constant attack of Satan and all his demons and his followers and all those who are our enemies. Abiding Christians. Bible reading, Bible loving, Bible abiding Christians, yet we may fall every now and then. We have so much joy when we talk about Christ, when we focus on Christ, the true Son of God, we have so much joy, but we sometimes tend to take or, or neglect or forget about the enemy, but there is always an enemy there, beloved church, and Christ is teaching us about him today. And tonight's sermon is Satan's Subtle Strategies, the three S's. I named it the three S's just as the 666, and today it's going to be the S and S and S, Satan's Subtle Strategies. How he subtly tries to steal what Christ has given us, beloved church. And we need to know his tactics. We need to know his strategies so that we can, as Paul says in 1 Timothy 6.12, we can truly fight the good fight of faith. When we are not aware of his pandelpile, as we say, his strategies and his deception, that, that is the time when we fall and we fail and we at times give up to him as well through temptation and our wrongdoings and we tend to we tend to unfocus on the perfect commandments and directions of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are overcome by his trickeries. And at times we fall and we fall greatly. But Christ is amazing. He's always ready to pick us up one more time. And what great example is there than the parable of the sower and the seed, beloved church? The sower and the seed gives us a great example of how Satan and what Satan and and what are his tax, tactics in taking of in, in in presenting this warhead to us and to try to tremble us and to make us fall. Glory be to your name, Lord Jesus Christ. And for those who have been cleansed by water and the word. These are the enemies of Satan. These, this is the thief. And the thief targets those who have been cleansed by water, which means baptism, and by the word. Now, baptism cannot be taken away from us. No one can take away baptism. And we cannot give up our baptism. It's not something where you come at a certain stage in your life and you say, Lord, I don't want to take it back again. It's not taken away because it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is there and it will remain until we face our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we may have denied it. We may deny it and not accept it, but we cannot give it away. Christ cannot take it away. Neither Satan can take away the washing of the water or baptism which we all have received. But Satan can take away the word. And this is what he steals, beloved church. This is what the thief and the enemy steals from our hearts. And we go to the sower and the seed. And our first verse, let's go back again, sorry, Shemasha. He steals the word from our hearts, from our lives, and from our minds. We read in Mark chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. Jesus says, He you, listen everyone. Behold, a sower went out forth to seed, to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the side of the path, 
and a bird came and devoured it. And then we go on to verses 14 to 15 and we have an interpretation or we have a commentary on this. The sower that sowed, sowed the word, which is Christ, glory be to his name, and the word is his gospel. And those by the side of the path are they in whom the word is sown. And as soon as they have heard it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was shown in their heart, or sown in their heart. He comes and takes the word from our hearts, beloved church. Not our baptism, not our love for Christ, not our desire to serve Christ. He takes the word. Why? Because he knows, Satan knows very well, that the seed of God's word is the basis of our faith. Without the word of God, there is no faith. We read in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Therefore, faith is from hearing of the ear and the hearing of the ear is from the word of God. So he comes and he snatches, he steals the word away through his deception, through his temptation. Through his perception of this world and the desires before us, the sinners, who have evil desires as well. And he uses those tools. And when we give up to Satan, when we neglect the word of God, when we forget that not only I am baptized, but I've been also cleansed by his word, Satan then is successful in snatching the word out of our heart. How does he manage this beloved church? When we read Mark chapter 4, we are told that it is us who allow him to work deception in our lives and to make it easy, to prepare the ground. And when the ground is prepared, he snatches the word from our hearts. In verses 16 and 17 of Mark chapter 4, we read, And those sown on the rock are they who, when they hear the word, immediately with joy receive it. And they have no root in them, but are temporary. And when there is affliction or persecution on account of the word, they are quickly stumbled or they quickly stumble. What he does, we allow Satan to turn our hearts into stony rock hard places or grounds. So that when the word is sown, it doesn't give any root. It doesn't take root. There is no significance in our life. We neglect it. We forget it. We take it for granted. And when it's not alive in our hearts, because the heart hasn't been cultivated and made ready to receive the seed, then Satan comes and takes away and snatches that seed from our hearts, beloved church. He manages to steal the word of God by, by giving us, or some of us, some thorny hearts. Not nice, cultivated and prepared hearts, but thorny hearts. Hearts that have got thorns. We will receive the word, but then allow him and other things to choke the word. Right at this moment, we hear the word. Each time we go to a sermon, each time we read the Word of God, we hear this Word of God. But what we must do in actual fact, before we even open our Bibles, before we... See, that's why we spend an hour and five or ten minutes today, before hearing the sermon, this Word, we spend an hour and ten minutes asking God to forgive us, praising His name. Admitting to our foolishness, to our sinful nature, to our wretched nature. We glorify His name. We beseech His love, His grace and mercy. And during this time, this hour and ten minutes, the church, you and I, through our prayers, we are cultivating our hearts. We are making our hearts ready so that right at this moment, as you hear this word, which is the sin, the word, which is the seed, the word of God. And it is being plant, plant, uh, sowed or planted in your heart by me, the fool, fool, the sinner, who has come out with seed in my hands and I am now dispersing this seed. And your heart being ready, now you are receiving this word. But I ask this question, are our hearts true, truly being prepared? Have they been prepared for this seed to be planted in our hearts? 
in order for them to give fruits of glory and of repentance for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. If not, then even in this place, Satan is taking us away from that opportunity to have those hearts prepared so that this seed will truly give glory to God and make our lives easy and sanctify our whole lives with the Word of God, with the truth. Jesus prayed and said, Father, sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is the truth, beloved church. In verses 18 19 of Mark 4, we read, And those sown among thorns are they that hear the Word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the residue or the remains of other lusts enter in and choke the word and it is without fruits we could be hearing the word and agreeing to it but right at this minute our minds could be flowing away what am i going to do next you know what i think i'll tell a few people and we go to red robins and we'll hang out and have some food or tomorrow's work, I've got to get up early. Oh my God, I forgot I hadn't paid my, paid my cell phone bill and I have all these issues. Oh my God, I have illness. Oh, I have this issue with a friend, a relative. And all these worries and all these cares become thorns so that when the seed is entered, there is no root, there is no growth, there is no fruit, beloved church. And this is what Satan does. He prepares the way, he prepares our hearts when we allow him to, to make it rocky, to make it thorny, so that when the word of God has entered there, he snatches it away and there is no fruit, there is no growth. Oh, and sin no more. There was joy in the life and the heart of the sinner when Jesus says, where are they who condemn you? And she says, they are gone. And Jesus says, I replied and said, therefore, I will not condemn you. Go and sin no more. There was joy in the heart of all those lepers, of all those who were blind, of all those whom Jesus touched and said, it desires, I desire to give you healing. There was joy when Jesus entered into the upper room and said, Peace be with you. They were a bit afraid, but they received joy. There must be joy in your heart by this, at this moment, beloved church, from the Word of God. The Word of God tells us in James 1, no, that's not on there, that when we enter into many and various trials, that we must count it joy. Because it's the Word of God and it's commanding us. And it promises us that in every suffering, in every situation, Christ is there and He will grant us that victory and that escape and that ultimate comfort from our hardship. And lastly, beloved church, is when the Word has been snatched out of our hearts, when there is no joy in our hearts, that's when Satan destroys, Jesus says. What does he destroy? He destroys the faith. And this is where many people walk away from Christ. Because there is no joy. Because there is no word. The word is not effective. He has already taken that out, the enemy. Then the faith is destroyed. Jesus said to Simon in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 32. He said to him, Simon, Simon, pray. Lo, Satan has desired to sift you, Simon. And I know what he is going to do, Simon. Hadir Ariet, no, Lord, no one's going to touch you. I will go to death, Lord. And you know, when, when Jesus said the Son of Man is going to Jerusalem and he's going to be captured, the Word of God tells us that Simon actually laid hand on his master and he pulled him to one side as though they may, Lord, I won't, Lord. They're going to de desert you. They're going to deny you. No, Lord, I'm not going to do it. And Jesus' response was, Satan, get away from me. Stand behind me, Satan. Simon, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't be so prideful. Let me out of here. Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But I, I have prayed for you. That you'll see, I have prayed for you. Not that... You won't be murdered, you won't be killed, you won't be captured, you won't be crucified with me, you won't deny me. No, 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 no. 
Jesus said, I have prayed that your faith may not fail you. And you also in time turn and confirm your brethren. You're still going to deny me because it, because it must happen. There is a perfect reason. But I pay, pray for your faith. And Christ has prayed for each and every one of us too, beloved church. When Christ prayed and said, Father, I do not only pray for these, the, the disciples, but I also pray for all those who believe in me according to their words. There's a prayer for you and I. Christ have, has prayed for us. And he has prayed for our faith, as he did for Simon. Why? Because faith is the substance of power, beloved. Faith is the substance of our Christian power. It's not how many candles you light, how many church services you attend, how much money you donate, how much work you do for Christ. No, it's the faith. That's why we have been justified. And I'll close off as I started with the begin in this, this sermon in the beginning. We have faith. We have been justified by faith. That is the power to be justified. When we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, then Jesus said, now you are a candidate to receive all my gifts of grace. Whatever the church has to bestow, it will bestow upon you because you have faith. So when Satan takes out the word and takes the joy out of our hearts and our minds, then he destroys the faith. Then we have nothing left, left beloved church. Studying God's word and learning, being aware of Satan's devices, make us wiser and this is how we can tackle the enemy. In Psalm 119 verse 98 we read, You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. Through your commandments, your words. So let us be alert and be knowledgeable of the word of God, beloved church. If we are not reading, studying, living and allowing the Word of God to take that most center of our lives, the most significant part of our lives, then we are open to be hammered. We are open to be sifted by Satan just as wheat, as Jesus said to Simon, his disciple. Hearing this message, beloved church, now that this seed has been planted in our hearts, let us beseech and pray during the prayer of absolution that the Lord God our glorious King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, will firstly hear our supplication and accept our confession and pardon our sins and transgression and make us worthy to partake in all sanctifying body and blood, His body, Jesus our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. O oh, our God, good and full of mercy, O oh, our God, good and full of mercy, whose grace and compassion are abundant upon all, pour, O oh, my Lord, the kindness of your, your pleasant love on these servants of yours, and transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Father, renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation, and purify them in your kindness from all the blemishes of the flesh and the spirit. Father, strengthen the hope of their belief by the help of your grace. Make straight the gates of their deeds in the paths of righteousness. Father, make them to rejoice with the saints in your kingdom, in the confirmation of the hope of their faith, of the adoption of sonship, and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Father, strengthen them by the aid of your mercy to observe your commandments and to fulfill your will to confess, worship, and glorify your holy name, O Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever.